smells like updog in here. The rock must be cooking again. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to find a polynomial with the given zeros of least degree, of course. Over here, people, this is kind of like the reverse of the zero factor property. Oh, boy. I want the zero to be 2 and minus 3 with multiplicity 2. What do you do? All right, let's just talk about what's happening here. This says that x is equal to 2 and x is equal to a minus 3. But what is this multiplicity bigger than one business? That means it's a zero more than one time. It's a zero how many times? Two times. So then, also, x is equal to a minus 3. It happens twice. Now look what's happening here. Oh boy. If I subtract this 2 off each side, then I have x minus 2 is equal to 0. Uh-huh. And then, if I add a 3 to both sides, I have x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay. And further, x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, if I take 0 and multiply it by 0, what's that going to be? Zero. And then if I multiply it by another zero, zero. So we go and we multiply those two. We take this zero and we multiply it by this zero and we multiply it by this zero. So if I take zero times zero times zero, what do I have? Zero. For sure, for sure. Now you probably write it in a little more compact notation and then you say that this is x minus two times x plus 3 squared, that's equal to 0. Now I realize after you do this a few times, you're going to jump from here to there. And that's fine. I don't mind. Fuck some flower. But perhaps you want to multiply that out. You're all like x minus 2 times Oh, x squared, this one times that one, double it, plus 6x plus 9, fine, that's still equal to 0. So then you go and you go a little bit further, and then you multiply all these guys out, and you find that this is x to the third. Then there's a, a 6x squared plus an x squared is 7x squared, and then x times 9, that's 9x, and then 9x minus 12x is minus 3x, What's next? That last term, whole oh, minus 18, and then this is going to be a polynomial. Now, if I didn't multiply that outright, make sure you put it in the comments down below. Let's go over to here. This one's more complex. You have a complex zero. Ho oh, ho! Complex zeros theorem. They happen in conjugate pairs. That also means that x is equal to 1 minus 2i. Why? Because this is a 0, so in order for the polynomial to have real coefficients, you need to have the conjugate in there so that when you multiply them out, it has real coefficients. Let's go. So, this is x minus this guy, 1 plus 2i times x minus this guy, 1 minus 2i. I'm stepping skips here. Like over there, we said you probably just jump here. All right, so it's x minus the 0. That's the factor. Let's go ahead and multiply this out so that we can find that polynomial really does have real coefficients. So then, here's what I recommend you do. This is tricks. It's like ollie kick flips. You're like, whoa. Yeah. So, we go, we call it x minus 1 minus 2i. Why? Ooh, ooh. And then, this is x minus 1 plus 2i. Ay, ay, ay. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to use some fancy grouping. I want to group these two. Boom, 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 boom. And you're like, why? Because then you have the difference of squares. a minus b a plus b. Oh, boy. Where this is your a, and that should be. Now we see that that's going to multiply out to be a squared minus b squared. Oh, b squared. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll say x minus 1 squared minus 2i squared. Okay. Finish him. You multiply that out. That's perfect. 
squared. So then this is an x squared. This one times that one, double it. Minus 2x. This one squared plus 1. Fun. Now I want to leave that minus sign out right front here. Boom. Because then I make it rain, make it rain. And you get 2 squared, which is 4. Sure. I squared. I squared evaluates to minus 1. That guy right there. I squared. It's a minus 1 all day long. Here we go. So that's going to be a plus 4. And my final polynomial, x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4 is plus 5. And that's my polynomial, p of x. Box and flower.